Okay, so we're looking at just a couple common beginner mistakes. That's the theme of today. Um, and uh, I want to start with this piece. I'm very sorry if I sound stuffy or if I take breaks and the thing mutes. I'm just sneezing. Um, but yeah, uh, some common beginner mistakes, especially with portraiture, is to, uh, to make the nose too small. Um, and the, the, the reason why I call it common beginner mistake is because it's, it's common because it's elusive. The nose being small is a very good looking thing. Everyone wants a smaller nose. Um, but what happens is because it hides in the beauty triangle, you tend not to notice how small the nose really is. And when you think about it, this is a nose of like a, a toddler or a 12 year old on a very, very uh, developed body. Look at the bone structure. This nose is too small. And we've seen like uh, plastic surgery horror stories where we see like someone overdid it or um, and the nose looks absolutely just uh, just just wrong for the face, especially because the bone structure and the forehead and everything is so well developed. So really the biggest fix would be widening the nose. She still looks very, very beautiful. It's just that it's no longer uncanny and it's no longer uh, mixing the age groups. So the nose is considered a common beginner mistake, especially when they're just moving into beauty standards and uh, kind of just uh, designing beautiful people and you're moving and you want to work in that Barbie thing. You want to design that next anime superstar, realistic, whatever, and you want to work with that um, hybrid anime realism kind of deal. So uh, when we do these mistakes, when we make these mistakes, we, uh, it's very hard to find the, uh, find the fix for them. So if we flip the canvas, very small nose, as you can see. And when we enlarge, and enlarge the nose, large and, uh, when we enlarge the nose, we, um, we got to make sure the perspective is right. The bigger the nose, the more susceptible to perspective it is. It takes up more space in the camera. Okay. So I'm going to say this quite a lot. Um, Across portfolios, I come across this a lot when a student is moving into the beauty standard and they just want to make some Barbie doll looking faces. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> Big in the nose. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and big in the nose. So, um, enlarge in the nose. Largenate the nose. Okay. And then we kind of just, the nose is a great way to keep track of your symmetry. So the lip symmetry was a little bit off because that nose was so small. The nostrils weren't guiding your symmetry. Another elusive common beginner mistake is forgetting about that in three-quarter view the lips can undergo perspective so we see more of the bump of the lip the outer cylindrical bump of the lip okay so we see this outer bump right here so it's no longer a flat lip like how you painted it that has a, a bump do you see that difference guys can anyone explain this difference that the, what I just did can anyone explain that kind of have to exaggerate it with a little bit of extra light. So most of these, one of these was just a beauty thing and then one of these was a perspective thing and both are very elusive. They're the difference between intermediate and advanced in my opinion from what I've seen with my students. Um, these are the tiny, tiny little details that hide in the shadows. And uh, the more you improve, the better you get at drawing, the more difficult it is to improve and keep making massive uh, strides with your work. You don't just, uh, after you've improved exponentially, which, which uh, fundamentals make you do, they make you improve exponentially in a very, very quick uh, speed, um, you, you begin to stagnate because you've already covered all the fundamentals. It's pretty hard to just do another big jump in your work. And this is where these tiny little mistakes are. So a lot of advanced students are making these mistakes and they don't know. So let's take a look at what happened with the lips now that we've applied the perspective. 
So we embiggen the nose and we applied a perspective to the lips, which is a, just, a, it's just a massive, massive change. It represents a different kind of artist, a different kind of ability to rotate. And that's what you guys should be looking out for. And unfortunately, when it comes to these uh, beginner mistakes, I call them, I like to call them beginner mistakes because they are uh, mistakes that, were, that, that, that are prominent in beginners and some of them are so elusive they stay as beginner mistakes even when you're in your advanced years because they're beginner uh, uh, obstacles. And uh, some of these are very difficult to iron out unless you're doing lots and lots of referencing. And referencing not just beautiful faces to fix the nose issue and uh, working with lots of three-quarter view referencing for the lips. Uh, a simple form study isn't going to help some of these issues that hide away. A form study will help you find all of the hidden beginner mistakes in lighting and form structures. But some of these, are they just come straight from referencing. Some of these do come from perspective. Some of these come from better geometric anatomy. Um, some of these come, come, over, come from uh, abundant traceover, di traceover diagrams. Getting a reference, uh, lowering the opacity of the photograph, and using a pen or something drawing over the picture with a red marker to identify like the blueprint of the, of the geometry. Then you start to identify the, the subtle little nuances of geometric anatomy across the face. Okay, so there's another one, another ge uh, beginner mistake we covered a lot in the previous beginner mistake uh, critique hours, and that was the shadow on the side of the nose. This one isn't that excessive, it isn't value sharing, but I'm just going to lighten it up anyway, because this edge right here is a little too strong. <clears throat> when you're older and you're frowning, you do get those creases. When you're younger, you kind of get a more mild looking crease, more of a hill than a wrinkle, an extra little hill on top. So try the hill. If the hill is giving you the frown that you need, then, uh, then just keep that instead of going for the full wrinkle, the full trench. And even if her eyebrows are blue, purple, whatnot, they still have to have this halo of shadow around them to make them look like they're seamed into the, the, the skin, or they're seamless. That highlight just sits on top of the eyebrows. There's this shine all across the face. And you are pulling from a very, very red skin tone, so what I'm going to do is push this over into the more warm skin tones and then get the old the old hair color back because what's happened is you made the skin too too cold meaning too red it looked like she had just run a mile hue saturation and then I'm just gonna bring back the old color of the hair okay so the skin was too pink just as a skin tone which can be another beginner mistake when we jump into color for the first time after lots and lots of grayscale use we tend to make mistakes with the skin tone as you can see it's very pink almost red and now it's a little bit more warm and a little bit more yellow and then the collective before and after so many seams many issues with the proportion and again, no matter how much you dress up these 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 masterpieces, these these little things will come back, They'll come back to haunt you. Issues that you don't see um, unless you're a little bit more uh, advanced, I guess. I'm just bringing saturation in the midtones of the lips. This is a lot, and any midtones around the eyes as well. This is a lot of pigmentation that you've brought in. You have a chance to really make it work. If the hair has a highlight, the saturation of the hair surrounds the highlight. It's not blue all around, it's just surrounding the highlight. And the highlight on the hair has a curve to it, just like that. Do you see that? Really, really nice little trick. But uh, Dodge Tool likes to saturate, so we have to desaturate this root back and towards the white. Anywhere where we have hair combined with skin, so I, I didn't read the answer for why that person, uh, uh, the cylinder of the lip is rotated so when seen in perspective it has a rounded shape. 
Excellent. That bulge, that belly, that, that beer belly of the cylinder is visible from the side. Where it's not visible at all in front view because it's pointing at the camera. The camera doesn't catch what's looking directly at it like a laser. But yeah, write this back to me. Anywhere where there is a hair, um, uh, an edge of hair along the skin, so the formation of the edge of the hair along the skin, blend, blend, blend. Write that back to me, please. See how red the skin was? I would desaturate the skin even more. I'm just going to run a quick desaturation brush right along the skin. Skin really doesn't saturate that hard. And compared to all of this uh, high level saturation on the pigmentation, on the makeup, all of that tends to, uh, to dwarf the skin just a little bit more, make it look a little bit more desaturated dwarf its saturation. <clears throat> and then uh, what else? I think that's it for now. Some pretty big changes. They're, they're, they're changes that are small in measurement between the before and after, but in the bigger picture these are the changes that separate artists in different tiers and different and I don't like talking like that because it's a little bit elitist. I don't like saying we've got masters and we've got beginners. But honestly, in every apprenticeship, every, you know, before we started tiptoeing around people's feelings for no reason, um, we, we had apprenticeships, we had uh, masters, and we had students. And um, it's good to identify where you are in that, in that greater, very vague and abstract map, but nonetheless, it's good to identify where you're from. And uh, the, 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 the fastest path to learning is realizing that you know nothing. At that point, you become like a sponge. And my nose is stuffed very back. <laughs>
no. <laughs> oh crap, now they're gonna call you Jeff. Gonna take the piss out of it. Jeffrey legit hasn't been here for ages. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Please forgive me. Will you forgive me if I talk like this? Jeremy, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Jeremy. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just reinforcing this uh, wider bridge. Again, just to recap on that age. <laughs> and then I'm just going to run this, uh, this slide of the side view shadows. <laughs> oh, who helped? <laughs> Jeff for me. <laughs> Will you forgive me, Jeff for me? <laughs> for those on YouTube, Jeremy's my mod. And I, I haven't even seen Jeffrey in so long. And Jeffrey's probably going to watch this. He's just going to laugh his ass off at Jeremy. Jeffrey's been trying to out um, overthrow Jeremy for a long time. And there's just been this like po political like insurgency um, just building up in the background against Jeremy's uh, new promotion as mod. <laughs> Don't talk like that. <laughs> I don't know, man. A lot of women have gotten out of a lot of trouble talking like that. I'm just letting you know. It's an option, girls. If you bought a purse you weren't supposed to buy that was $400, all you got to do is just say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really didn't mean it. <laughs> and you'll just get out of it. What, is this like news? Well, some of the nostril will be hidden. <laughs> is this even a class anymore? It's like a pep talk for all the girls. Alright, I'm just um, fixing up the nostril. <laughs> game of mods <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah um jeffrey and jeremy they kind of i don't know sometimes you can't even tell but they do have this like chemistry when they're in the same room and i don't know man if you look at it in the right way with the i don't know with the light on it in the right way they kind of seem like they're in love but it's hard to tell <laughs> Jeremy, I'm totally, like, <laughs> character assassinating you right now. I'm assassinating your character. <laughs> Damn, 400 for a purse? That's an option, girls. <laughs> exactly. You have that option, all right? <laughs> Things just got intense in more ways than one. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a voice actor. I'm a really good voice actor, so I, I can do things with my voice. Alright, I'm not a voice actor. I'm just a glorified <clears throat> Alright, so one more little light leaning on this side of the chin because the light is coming in on an angle, and then we'll do a full before and after and move on to the next painting. Did Jer is Jeremy still giving me the silent treatment? Jerry Bear, come on. Jerrylicious. Come on, bro. Don't hate on me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I called you Jeffrey. <laughs> I'll edit it out if you want. <laughs> Better edit it out. Alright, so. Before... See these? This is what the jump is between beginner mistakes. It's, it just takes your work to that, across that, that the, the pond. You just jump across that last little weird, tiny, but very, very scary looking uh, obstacle. And for some reason, being as advanced as, a, as an intermediate is, they're just so scared of it. So there's a lot of work left for the nose. That's more detail. There are issues with the visibility of this eye. This whole eye should be just tucked in a little bit further. Let me just show you real quick. I don't like uh, flaking on a lesson. We just do a little dupe. 
like that and we just hide that other eye tilt it down <laughs> Jerilicious. Oh my god, he's still ignoring me! <laughs> Jeremy! <laughs> Abu's not here. Abu can't help you now. You can't tell on me on Abu just because I called you Jeff. Abu can't help you. Abu's always on my side. Probably say something witty like, I mean, all you people tend to look alike. <laughs> no, Abu wouldn't say that. All right, and then tuck, 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 tuck. And then perspective. Up, tuck, tuck, tuck. Until we hide some of this eye in this newly enlarged, bigified nose. Embiggened nose. This is such a good word, embiggened. Okay, so before, too much visibility on the distant eye, and uh, just that's why I keep tilting it, because that I need to hide some of that eye behind, so that entire inner corner of the eye was visible, and then finally what I would do is I would just tuck in the cheekbone, just a little bit, it seemed just a little bit large, more of a statement uh, large than just typical Barbie doll large, okay? So before, after, and um, I'm just going to do one more push back so I can review it. It's hard to tell with all this hair everywhere. One more little tilt out. And then there is the fact that in the three-quarter view, which is another very, very elusive little beginner mistake, the eye is less wide. It's not less long or less high or less whatever. It's just less wide. And we see less of that outer corner. And just like we see the beer belly of the, of the, of the lip, we see the beer belly of the eyeball. So we see more of a belly or a, or a, or a swell of the distant eyeball. Do you see that? Too much visibility on the distant eye. So that's perspective. That's called perspective. Okay. So any questions? Do another tutor nose tutorial, but instead of Bob and Steve, it's Jeremy and Jeffrey. <laughs> oh my God, Lionheart. I do no such thing. <laughs> Okay, so uh, any questions at all about any of these changes? Still kind of being a little perfectionist punk about this. Just want to make sure it's perfect, but reasonable. There we go. That's a little bit more symmetrical. And then the full before and after. Alright. Sorry, I'm a perfectionist. So we see more of the nose, less pink, less redness, unless she's supposed to be red. So if she was supposed to be red, if she was supposed to be a red person with blue hair like something out of Guardians of the Galaxy, then man, just do this. Just go for this. You, This would be more of a a statement or it would make a little bit more sense for you to saturate like this and even then this kind of saturation isn't allowed you only sa saturate around the mid-tones the main color of the object okay so more of a swell in all the objects in perspective a larger nose I don't even think this distant nostril is even visible to be honest I'll do a little bit of a bump for it but we need more of an edge here than anything else I don't know, honestly, it's, it's a, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm probably just dilly-dallying. Okay. This distant nostril really wouldn't be that visible, because we've increased the size. 
So yeah, definitely. Um, if the light is coming from the top, then this half of the face would typically be in shadow. Um, we would just darken that, uh, but there might be some diffuse from the light environment surrounding. Uh, this is when you can mess around with the background. See this background, it's all like, uh, uh, has a statement to it, it has some texture, it has some uh, canvas and like this, uh, I forget what this is called when they put a shadow around the outside. That's a framing with shadow. Um, uh, you're allowed to do this because this is being treated as an illustration. Uh, so add a horse, add a boat, add a background with some storm clouds, it's an illustration. And, uh, um, but if it was a study and you're trying to study some form and you're really not going for any specific story, narrative, whatever, this is obviously a character. It's gotten a lot of love from this artist. They're really thinking about this character. So, uh, so, so then we, we excuse it and that's how the narrative um, fuels the, the masterpiece. All right, look, let's look at 80s blazers and 80s hairstyles. So as an artist, not only are you responsible for memorizing biology, or remember, I'll look at the questions in a second, uh, memorizing anatomy, um, learning how to um, uh, just just uh, keep track of everything. Uh, you have to be aware of fashion. When you're not aware of fashion, you tend to make really, really bad fashion choices. So usually all artists, I'm not sure if you guys notice, but artists are very attuned to fashion. Even if they're not fashiony people or they're not some sort of like... Uh, uh, what are they called? Hipsters? Yeah. Even if you're not like some kind of <laughs> hipster who like, uh, you know, your entire, entire personality um, is all about how you dress yourself out, out on the outside. Um, if we're not, even if you're not that kind of person, you still tend to make really, really good choices with your clothing if you're an artist. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just how we dress ourselves as another chance as a concept artist or an artist or an illustrator to, to draw something again. The way we dress ourselves, I've noticed, is very specific. The clothes I choose... Um, I don't. I don't just wear anything, um, and this just comes from the way I dress my characters. I don't just dress them in anything. So we already have like an inclination towards looking at fashion in general. But when I look at this, this this entire critique that I'm about to do is solely based on fashion. It's a little bit subjective, but at the same time, if you think about fashion as a as a unit of study, some people study fashion, they major in fashion. This is regarded as a fundamental. Learning about the periods of fashion and what they represent. Right now, I see a blazer and I see a large volume. I see this. And today's current way that we dress blazers, so blazer, uh, straight hair, is another kind of fashion thing. And girls are a little bit more attuned to this than guys, I guess. Uh, but we tend to have the large shoulder with the straight down hair. The reason why is because we don't want the hair in the way if we're making a statement about uh, the blazer. Usually we keep the hair out of the way. We don't have big hair and big shoulders. Only one thing gets to be big and that one thing carries the, the piece. It's exactly the same thing. It transfers right over into your fashion design and your, and your, and your costume design. You don't just make everything big and feathery and start to look like a peacock. Um, and uh, when we have that peacock style of dressing our characters, it tends to look very, very cheap. Um, not just that, but this exact kind of hairstyle is very, very manly. This, this, this uh, angle that she's in with the big hair, it looks like one of those uh, boxes that are full of dye uh, for men for their grays. It just looks like one of those, you know, overly oversized hairs, hair at the top, so you can show off the hair a little bit more. If you're marketing for hair, you oversize the hair. So, um, so what I would do is I would just because I really love this whole thing you have right here. I would just get this out of the way. I would just flatten and straighten this hair. And what it'll do is it'll bring the accent back over here. If we've got this three-way um, fight between the shoulder pads and, and the hair, we're really coming from an era where fashion language was a little bit underdeveloped. In the 80s, they just thought they could combine anything with anything, and because everything is big and beautiful, then you'll naturally get something that's good. And as the 90s came in, exactly, that, that kind of still was there. Um, with like that crimped hair, or whatever it is, and, and the, or the, the colors, and the straight, um, and like the prints, and all of that stuff. And uh, uh, the, the, I don't know what it is with hair when it came to the 90s, but it was just a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit less crazy than the 80s, but it was still just, just you know, uh, boiling down to a more modest uh, silhouette for the hairstyle. 
Okay, so liquify has completely farted. So, um, I'm just gonna have to wait till it just chill out. All right. But around the 2000s, around 2005 to 2010, we start getting straighter hair. The straight hair look is out of the way. You still have hair. Hair is a still, still a unit of beauty, but it's out of the way. And straight hair just took over. Straight hair was out of the way whether you wanted to wear tank tops. And the tank top was the, uh, was the center of the, of the, the centerpiece of the fashion or, the, or the, 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 the outfit. Or you wanted to wear blazers. You wanted to wear a dress. Straight hair was perfect for that. So just remember that as concept artists, you can't have the crazy wind flowing through the hair and have a, a, have a massive shoulder, um, a shoulder piece with feathers on it and have this excessive detail that's really dragging attention away from the portrait. Um, you can't have all of that. You can't have it all. Okay, this, this whole thing is just going to explode. Actual pixels, image, image size. I'm just going to... I don't know why this is happening. My computer should be more than capable of... <clears throat> so I'm just tucking in some more of that size and I really want to just uh, kind of uh, attach the hair to the silhouette of the head just a little bit more. And you see this kind of thing with cars. We make cars in our image. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. But when a car has crazy body, um, like a, like body, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just like contours, I guess, or extra little, not some decals, it's just like the, the, the body of the car has, is more uh, angled or geometric at the front. You tend to see the outsides of the body and the back wheels of the car a little bit more modest. But when you see crazy build in the back of the car and size at the back of the car, the front of the car tends to be a little bit more modest. Or if you th talk about like Cadillacs or luxury cars, you tend to see really, really unified, universal shapes, very squared, very jagged, and, and not at all uh, over the top or fancy, because those are no longer timeless looks. So the straight hair became a timeless look in fashion, and this is something that you, the artist, you, the designer, have to understand. If it's out of the way, it's really easy to dress up, especially because you have this hair piece, you have the earring, you have the really, really strong um, uh, eyeshadow. This is a smoky eye. This is no business. This is the, 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 the kind of like the, um, the I guess, uh, the centerpiece in, in, in makeup as well. When you do a smoky eye, you really don't couple it with a dark lip. Recently, that's kind of been popular, coupling it with a dark lip. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the smoky eye also demands a lot of attention. So you were going for all of it. And now that we've kind of made the silhouette of the head a little bit more feminine, because remember, this is key. Uh, the silhouette of the head is very, very based on the, th of the female, very based on the thinness of the neck. If at one point you've made that really, really large, you've interrupted the silhouette, you made it a little bit more adolescent. Think about 80s hair. 80s hair has a very big, uh, like a curly afro type of deal. So what that does is it increases the silhouette. The silhouette becomes large headed. So the large head, small body, that's an adolescent. That's like a a child and so you had more of that tomboyish um, girly thing happening back in the 80s sporty tomboyish and uh, kind of like jumpsuit type of deal you really wouldn't weren't going for the fe for the feminine uh, mature kind of thing so you see what that did before so this is my statement this is just my taste in this um, it's also a fashion fundamental so if you look into it, I think you will find that it kind of is a little bit more easy on the eyes than all of this uh, extra business. If you wanted to keep the hair, you can't keep the headdress. This is very masculine. This is reading as a faux hawk or something like that. If you have large hair, you just don't put this headpiece right here. You put this in there. When you have a boring, circular, um, uh, just, just a very, very basic, even if we did this, is completely just uh, removing that and we empty out this side of the body and this can really make the statement you want it to make but you can't have both of them you can't have all of them not so much a beginner mistake but uh, but definitely referencing is, is good and knowing that just uh, even a topical awareness of fashion as as uh, concept artists I think you guys are gonna have to deal with a lot of these later 
Okay, so what happened was you raised the outer shoulder. It really started to look like a glamour shot. I don't know if you guys know what those are. But <laughs> go ahead and look those up. It's like, you know, whatever it is, if you want to include it, go for it. It's like everything goes kind of, kind of uh, fashion style photography or uh, glamour. That's how you spell it, glamour. I don't know. Shot. Okay, so they got it all. They had their hair did and their makeup and their nails and their jackets and it was everything. It was just like, hey, if we combine a lot of stuff together, it must look good, right? And that was a very, very early stage, early, um, very m immature stage in our fashion, in our fashion progression. This is when we were teenagers, basically. When humanity was teen, there's a teenage years. We just grab whatever we want and put it together. Not even that toddler years. So before a little bit high, and now it's just a, as low as it needs to be. Sorry, I completely didn't look at the questions. I'll look at them in a second. Okay, so if you were designing this for a game, you really wouldn't get away with the big hair, big shoulders, big headpiece. You wouldn't. You would be told to get rid of some stuff. Your art director is just going to tear your work apart and say this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Trust me, they will. They'll ruin your work. All right, so that shoulder was just a little bit too high, and I'm just trying to make it a little symmetrical. So do you see that? <clears throat> and then the full before. A little bit too strong, and if you want to keep the faux hawk, which is intimidating, it looks more like a... Um, like lizard, like a lizard's headpiece or something like that. It tosses it in the air or it um, unfolds it to intimidate its enemy. So if you're pulling from that, it, she reads as a very lizard-like creature. You got to get rid of this piece right here. It's either this, right, which looks very nice without it, or uh, or this. You want this to, to, to make a statement. What I would do is I would hide the ear with this. Because then this, this ear is just in the way. Do something like that. It's okay. Not every elf ear. Just because there's an elf ear doesn't mean it has to be visible. It's not entirely required. Okay. So either that or this. And th the other shoulder still needs to be fixed. All right, so a couple of, of changes here. The lips are just a little bit asymmetrical. Um, the head is very masculine, but you, you're kind of pushing from that, pulling from that lizard feeling. So it does, it does read very well. Um, is her body tilted in a straight, strange serpentine way? Something like that, yeah. Um, no, it's not just you. I'm definitely reading like reptilian off of her. <laughs> Megan has some glamour shots too. Um, uh, to be a good artist, just know everything about everything in your set. <laughs> no, it's not to that level. To summarize what Isabrak is saying about the hair and shoulders, it is the design principle of contrast and having one element accentuated rather than competing with each other. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> what? Who farted? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, <laughs> my liquify farted. <laughs> it was like lagging on me or something. Yes, Pinterest, absolutely. Pinterest is just the way to go. Go to Pinterest. Go look at like Alexander McQueen. Just start there and then just branch out. You don't want too much bigly. <laughs> don't don't bring in too much of the bigly. Um, I just don't wear anything. It's super. <laughs> Um, did Ista just call me a hipster? No, I'm saying, I'm saying those people who are really obsessive about what they wear to a point where their personality doesn't even matter to them anymore, <laughs> or just building their character, or like developing and maturing in life, all they really give a shit about is just going to Forever 21 and just like rating the, rating the, 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 the thingies. Um, I would, yeah, I would suggest a dark background, all of this sparkle and illumination, um, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know what's the word for, iridescent, I think that's the term. Um, all right, let me see. Um, 
Uh, the ear was uh, not low, not high. It just wasn't sticky outy. It was stuck on the head. Elf ears tend to stick out. <clears throat> oh, don't know if you read this before, but holding your tongue. I did read it, but I forgot. Against the roof of your mouth will help stop a sneeze. No, I'm better now. When I start talking, for some reason, my brain is like, oh, shit, she's lecturing. Okay, let's not sneeze. <laughs> I had a pep talk with my brain a long time ago, and I'm like, yo, listen, if I'm teaching you better not just give me these sneezes I know you can deal with it whatever it is pass it pass it and I just stop sneezing uh so back do another nose tutorial but, oh okay so we're already back there so any questions at all Alexander McQueen is awesome yes it's rock confirmed lizard <laughs> yes I'm the Anunnaki if you were to make the person look really powerful, like a shaman or a jungle group leader, what silhouette would you use? Big headpiece kind of thing? Yes, absolutely. But remember, you're pulling from tribal. Uh, tribal is very, very different. She seems like she's from a very developed society, quote unquote, um, meaning that they, uh, they, they think about symmetry, they think about stitching, they think about royal colors. Whereas with what represents royalty, represents richness in a tribal environment is considered the rich people's garbage. So um, wood or, 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 or plant life they use to represent themselves. So you're working from two completely to the savage and, and, and the civilization, which is a massive rift. Even in literature, we've seen them, see people observe the difference between the savage and its purity and how its closeness to nature. And it's a whole other planet, a whole other universe. And then you've got the civilian, the, the, the from from the civilization, which is very symmetrical, very put together. Um, and you don't see them wearing plant life very much, and uh, you don't see them wearing animal hides. You don't see them wearing. You see them wearing stitched cotton industrial uh, 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 material. I guess we can not industrial material, industrialized, uh, manufactured instead of natural and just picked up off the off the floor of the. And it, it, the savage, the so quote unquote savage, which is what we term in li literature as well, isn't isn't just a savage. Just you know, it's just a savage. There are the bones they find, the hide they choose, the shape of the god that represents uh, that's represented in the headpiece. They all have decisions behind that. It doesn't mean that you just pick up anything and put it together, and you have a shaman. There's still a lot of thought in there as well, and their religion governs a lot of their choices. Um, but when you are thinking tribal, you are thinking like a shaman, you're, you're pulling from the savage aesthetic, you're not pulling from the civilization aesthetic. Just remember that. Yeah, she does look like an 80s singer. And um, I would even take out the, the this piece uh, right here as well. The boob bothers me as well because we would see the nipple just right there. The nipple would just be like sitting chilling there, just around here. It'd just be a happy old nipple. Finally, some sunlight. <laughs> Finally. Um, what you can do is just, uh, I don't know why the nipple is talking like that. What you can do is just give her a little sticker or something like that. Um, or you can just carry this all the way here. So we just have a little bit more of this business. That's typically where that would be. Right, you got a lot going. The cleavage is demanding attention. The smoky eye is demanding attention. The dark lip is demanding attention. Like the staple of makeup is either you have dark lip and nude eyes or, or, or dark eyes and nude lip. You don't have uh, both. The 80s did that. The 80s did a lot of that. <clears throat> Peek a boob. <laughs> Peek a boob. Um. I think this is like rough material. I think it's like a hard material, so that's why we're seeing uh, no breast on the other side. But I know what you mean by one boob. So there was this jerk who commented about my time that I spend on the backgrounds. And I've since disabled his comments. He can't comment on my channel anymore unless he gets another account. You know. Um, but here's to you, jackass, all right? sit the fuck down and let me explain why I spend time on the background. Shut up and sit down. The reason why I change the background is because the background is vital in the three-part component of a light environment. How many times have I said this? How many times have I repeated this through constant videos? It seems like you're someone who's visited my videos a lot. The reason why I darken the uh, grayscale the background and lighten it is because the values you've chosen on this object are part of a greater relationship between the light 
the light it emanates, the power of that light, its, its magnitude on the object as well as the background and what that background does when it bounces back up on the object. When you have this super, super darkness everywhere, one, it's not good for presentation, especially because this is a character design. So next time you feel like you're going to be so smart and call me sensei and say, hey guys, appease Isterak's obsession over the background, just give her, you know, the basic background, just let her know that it really doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. And I don't like saying this, but I'm going to say it. Can I see your portfolio? If your portfolio contests mine, if you are better than me, if you're smarter than me, I'm just going to put my foot in my mouth. But if I'm better than you and at the basic, basic standard, I don't even like saying it. Just shut up and listen to me because I probably have some good tips to give you if my skill is higher than yours, okay? At the end of the day, I draw better than you do, okay, mister? So I'm giving, I'm sitting here spending my time giving you information, making sure your portfolios look pristine, clean, modern, and, uh, and just very put together, not immature, not adolescent looking portfolios. And if you don't want that, if you want to look like um, you have no idea what you're doing with your portfolio, please do the opposite of everything that I tell you to do in my videos. Do the exact opposite, all right? But until then, I'm going to keep getting better. And as I get better, you're going to get better too, I'm sure, but I'm still going to be better than you. And uh, you probably should listen to me, okay? All right. So what I did was I changed the background and I did this for a very specific reason. That red that you had everywhere was throwing off the exact palette you were using. You're making a statement with this red. You, he looks like he's a firebender who lived with earthbenders. Isn't that cool? But this red in the background wasn't allowing that red. It just seemed like it was a wash rather than making a statement. It just looked like it was the light environment um, and a sandy, uh, sandy dune kind of thing. And he wasn't really red. It was just the universe making him red. But here he's red. He's very, very specifically red colored. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the saturation, uh, saturation sponge. And I'm just going to, and all the mid-tones, anywhere where the light is touching. So I'm going to assume the light source is coming from here. I am just going to saturate. But yeah, from here on out, if you have nothing good to say to my channel, my channel is small enough that I can do this. I'm just going to go to your 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 little page on on YouTube with your uh, you know, um, whatever it is uh, name that you choose, and I'm going to block you. You're not going to be able to comment on my videos. You've got nothing decent to say. I have students in the audience, and I don't want them distracted. Just like in a in a lab in a, in a lab environment as well, but in a lecture environment, if you stand up and start yelling, I'm going to call security and get you dragged out. Um, anyone back when I taught in university, anyone who spoke out, I simply asked them to shut up. If they don't want to listen, they can leave. They can talk as loud as they can in the lobby. But if you're going to speak out loud and try to distract people, I'm not just going to let your comments sit there and and and, and fester in my comment section. Right? So I'm going to block you, believe me, when I when I say that. So finding all the midtones. And finally, I really wanted to get to this point. Really, really been looking at this piece. The face is very, very small for the amount of... The reason why this happened is because the hair is falling on his face. So he's a very quiet-looking character. And um, he looks like he doesn't talk much, right? He has that still still face and I think the reason why he looks that like that to me is because his lips are small and we tend to do that as character designers we shrink the mouth to represent a character that doesn't really talk they do this in anime as well even with handsome characters even with male characters that have more of a male um, a longer triangle than a female for the beauty so when we kind of erase all this it feels like typically from my instincts from what I know the eyes would sit up here. No, I'm just going to draw shadows for now. The eyes would sit up here, just around this line of the ears. The other eyes would sit over here. The eyebrows would take up this much space. The eyes would be just very, very high. And the nose would be down here somewhere. And then the, ch the, the face itself I would make much bigger. I feel burned and I wasn't even targeted. Um, Ista, the YouTuber who roasts you faster than I'm. <laughs> um, good for you, though. Isterak. Trolls have no place in learning, though. I kind of just trolled right now. 
No, I don't mind if this discussion, this is more of like a, when we discuss and when I talk to you and look over at the chat, I like, I love that. I did this a lot back when I taught um, and I want to do this still. I love having a conversation with you. I don't want to be that hard to attain teacher that has all the answers and, and, and is very difficult to, to, to contact. I want to be there to have a conversation with you guys. Make art not seem like such an elitist thing that's so inaccessible and everyone covets their knowledge. I want to be able to show exactly what uh, what it is we need to know. Um, but when I have people who are deliberately trying to put a stop into our motion towards learning and the, and, and the health of our community, uh, really passive aggressive assholes in the audience who just can't come to terms with the fact that they don't really know and are not as good as they want to be, um, really, really insecure people who are out to infect the world with their insecurity. Uh, those people I just shut down mercilessly. I'm not even going to try to be their therapist. I will shut them down. I have no time for, for people like that. So we bring the face back. Okay. Very, very tiny, tiny face. The nose is very... Uh, you're, we're using... Not only are we using uh, the, the children's beauty triangle, meaning the short nose, big nose, really tiny mouth, but uh, but we're not, I mean, the, the nose I drew is a little bit long, but uh, yeah, the face is taking up very, very little space. So I drew that little blueprint, and now I'm just going to reorganize. I'm gonna place the eyes where they need to be. All right, the nose and the rest of the face can move over here a little bit lower. And that's pretty much really, because it is an anime kind of character, that's pretty much all you needed to do. It, that was it. I think he has scars. I don't want to get rid of those. Um, Istabak, what do you think of your new nickname? Fistabrak? <laughs> okay, that sounds really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say this to Brad. Oh my god. Um, 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 stomping on the grave. <laughs> it's the he already did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, they just really piss me off. They just really piss me off. Um, they, they just get to me, man. They get to me. They really do. I know you're not supposed to give a rat's ass, but I, I like to think I have a relationship with my students, and um, then I like you know I, I, that's why the Discord was such a successful idea. Thank you, Marco. Okay, so right here. I keep saying queso. I wonder if any of my uh, Mexican or like Spanish-speaking students just giggle every time I say queso. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I'm shrinking the eye. Don't want him to look like a, a chibi. All right, so let's look at the before and after. Let's flatten the image. Before, after. Do you see what happened? Okay, so it looks a little bit more masculine. The eyes are less scrunched together, and the reason why the eyes were pushed down, can anyone tell me why the eyes were pushed down? Can anyone take a guess at why this happened? Why the eyes were shifted so low? Can anyone make it, take a gander? Take a gander at it. <laughs> can anyone tell me why? <laughs> Shut up and sit down, write that back to me. <laughs> Mr. Black, would you recommend any written works that talk about the tribal versus cultural aesthetic? Nearly all fashion um, uh, fundamentals talk about it. Um, a lot of the literary theory I studied, so my discourse took a different perspective on it. The savage versus the innocent savage that doesn't know the badness of its ways versus the civilized who will, who will be judged by God. We took a very like literary theory, um, dissecting uh, religious literature way at it. So I'm not very, very versed. I'm not a professional at fashion. Um, I don't understand all of the major fundamentals, the movements, the eras that came with it. I have a very, very topical idea. 
um, behind it, which has helped me choose better clothing for myself and for my characters. Um, but as for giving you a specific book, I'm so sorry, I don't have any that I recommend, but you can go about it by looking at fashion fundamentals, searching something like that. Uh, the top, you know, whatever top books you have to read if you want to be a fashion um, expert or, or the best fashion history store, like just find fashion history. Look at fashion history, Elijah, and you'll be able to, to pretty much have a better idea of what happened in the 80s and the 90s and the 50s, how war affected fashion, um, how, uh, how, how we dress like soldiers pretty much nowadays because of the, of the world wars and what they did to the way to the, the, the progression of, um, you know, which, which uh, resources depleted and how they affected the way we chose our clothes, how buttons were no longer available for a certain time and zippers took over and that changed the way we uh, approach sporty clothes. We have less buttons and sporty clothes. These, these kinds of things are available. Uh, you know, they talk, people talk about them, write about them in history, fashion history books. <clears throat> it got backgrounded. Um, okay. <clears throat> Any more questions? So if you do have a question for me, make sure you write at Isarac or else I won't find it. Um, um, fashion victim. <laughs> His face was horny. Yes, the horns. Good, 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 good. So when we're drawing a character design, um, what we have to do, what I always say, is do your gesture lines first, dress them up with shapes, and then design afterwards. We don't put the horns before we put the eyes. It's just, it's like putting, it's like, um, I don't know, like, I just can't find a good example for it. It's like, it's like, it's like making the chairs before you make the table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when we have, like, this is my basic blueprint for drawing those, uh, those, those Amazon girls that I have. I just have two circles, and it helps me find the face and the symmetry line and whatnot, and I just figure everything out. I have to find the cranium. I have to find the z-axis. I have to figure out where the eyes are going to be. Um, if they're in the right tilt for the three-quarter view, I go back and forth, blueprinting constantly. Um, until I finally realize, hey, the eyes have their own nice little space, and then I can place the horns in as 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 nicely as I want. Um, and this is only possible uh, if we have, a, you know, we start off with the skeletal structure and think about symmetry, the rotation. I wouldn't have known to rotate these 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 uh, these these horns this way if it wasn't for the symmetry line. The symmetry line wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this initial line. So when we're um, Designing these characters, uh, we have to start thinking about um, layers in which we've developed their anatomy, actual layers that reflect real anatomy back in the real world. Uh, if you throw the horns in first, and then, so you're going to do this, but you're going to want to do three-quarter view eyes, so now these horns are looking this way, and the three-quarter view eyes are looking this way, and then you've got the nose, and then you've got the head shrinking because you probably did start off with a circle. Uh, but it wasn't a three-dimensional circle. It wasn't a circle that you were thinking about in perspective um, and uh, with two circumference lines and the z-axis. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that goes into blueprinting. And the more you plan, the less mistakes like this that you make. Okay. So that's it for today. That's all I have. I did cover last time uh, why you should bring in this yellow-white light right here. So there's a yellow white light that I always use and last time last class right before this one I talked about all these areas that need it and you throw it on everything because the light has a nature to it and it unifies the objects just these initial brush strokes right here if you zoom out all the way just look at the navigator they're already starting starting to read this is because it's the right color to choose of course it's not in the right spots so we got to clean it up a little but when we use this yellow white color this is the trick um, this is right here, and this entire mistake, not planning, uh, letting uh, external units affect the core, a concrete skeletal symmetry uh, of the face is a massive beginner mistake. Um, and it's a beginner mistake that follows you to, to, to the bitter end. And we have um, an example of that from that from that three-quarter view girl with the tears that we, that we saw earlier in the hour. But yeah, that's it for today. If you liked what you saw and you want to keep following, go to isterac.com and go to Google Plus and click on that to join our community. Um, and you submit stuff here. Please don't submit 14-day challenge format or 14-day challenges in the miscellaneous work for community critique. You cannot submit formats of 14-day challenge 
or 14 day challenges. If you're submitting stuff like photo studies, um, kind of little studies like this, uh, finished pieces, landscapes, stuff like that. Um, actually, landscapes do have their own little little uh, little section no one's using. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I have to look at some of these next class. Oh damn, people have been using them. Um, actually, that one's pretty old. But yeah, please make sure you're posting to the right topic. And uh, any questions before I go? Um, do you know variations of the 14 day challenge? Do you know of variations like the 14 of the 14 day challenge? Okay. Um, you mean like different kinds of fort studies like the 14 day challenge? Um, I haven't really designed one for figures. All I've really done is kind of guide people around the amount of amount of time needed and mileage needed for really perfecting portraits. Too much anatomy and too much form and physics happens on a face that we need something like a 14 day challenge to mediate it all. Uh, but uh, when we're thinking about figures, really, it's it is mileage, but I don't really have anything assigned or pre-made for it or some kind of uh, lesson. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Isa. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the stream tonight. Um, by the way, the term you were looking for is putting the cart before the horse. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, pros. Yeah. <laughs> Mine sucked. <laughs> make the chairs before you make the table. <laughs> that, that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Ista, what would you do if you're trying to do a study of a statue? Um, working grayscale. Don't try to give it a color. And uh, work large to small, zoom out, map out the statue as well. You're really doing a texture studies, a texture study as well as an anatomy study with, it, with a statue, but not so much a skin tone study or a translucency study. A lot of the shadows on a statue are extremely dark because it's not see-through like skin, so it doesn't have that upper layer of like super translucent uh, material and blood and oxygenated blood and all of that stuff. <clears throat> How do I record the screen? Uh, open Broadcaster. Um, when will the new challenge be here? Sorry for asking that tedious question, but I'm really excited to participate. Um, as soon as I have some time to put it together and run the poll and decide on some polls, I mentioned before that um, I'll try my best to, to get the next challenge out as soon as possible. Having one challenge out every month is very taxing on my schedule, uh, so I won't be able to do it like that. I do want to have at least three a year or four a year, uh, which is very, very abundant because really you're given a, like two months to complete one. Um, or a month, and then we have uh, uh, critiquing them for two weeks, and then we have a poll which runs for another month, and then you work on it for t for a month, and then you have another one. So we have like times for the polls to be chosen, and it just takes me some time to decide on what the curriculum, what I've covered, what I haven't covered. So we did a lot of character design where we're uni uniting um, different. Um, completely different units into one character design. We've done a lot of that. I feel like the next one should be a, a landscape of some kind, uh, not so much a character design because I've pretty much just beaten that horse. I don't know if I'm using that saying right. Just remember English is not my first language. Okay, I'm, I, I'm Arab. I have more Arabic uh, sayings that I've tried to transfer into English than I have English sayings. Um, so I, 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 I try to translate them directly sometimes. Trust me, they do not translate. Um, but, but I hope I beat, I use that right, um, beating the horse, um, beating a dead horse, is that what it is? Yeah, uh, but, um, yeah, I'm going to try to get us into more, uh, unfamiliar un territory with the challenges. Um, how do you study colors? I find taking it from a photo very confusing. Just exposing yourself to them, you tend to pick up on their nuances a little bit. Cool versus warm, and, uh, uh pastel versus saturated. <clears throat> um, beating a dead horse, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Britain. <laughs> beating a dead horse before the table, yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, beating a dead horse. <laughs> Thank you, Britain. Thank you. I needed that. Um, save the horses. Um, um, <laughs> Looks like somebody's making the chairs before they beat the horse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, it sounds like you just translated something from Arabic. <clears throat> okay, I'll let you guys go. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. kind of seems like forever uh, from now until I see you guys, but alas, 
um, Tuesday the 28th at 5 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining.